Le texte juridique dont il est question soit publié, euh, il vient de l'être euh, de notre côté et il est donc à votre disposition dès maintenant. Nous avons donc trouvé un accord avec le gouvernement britannique sur le retrait ordonné du Royaume-Uni de l'Union européenne et aussi sur le cadre de notre future relation. C'est le résultat d'un travail intensif des deux équipes de négociateurs. Uh, on the Je part of the two negotiating teams, and I'd like to thank them in person. Obviously, the British team and our own team for their, their tenacity and professionalism. Mais aussi le résultat, uh, du côté européen, I'd also like to uh, uh, point to the results from a European side on the basis of permanent dialogue and real confidence that's been built over the last three years with the 27 member states, with the European Parliament. I can tell you, as you know, we really have built our positions together on our side and this new agreement. This agreement has been agreed between negotiators with a President Juncker uh, this morning with uh, Prime Minister Johnson he concluded this and he will present this uh, later on at the European Council of the 27. I would also like to uh, offer my personal thanks to him for his confidence over the last uh, three years. I'd like to thank uh, President Donald Tusk on the Council side and his whole team. That is who I wish to thank. This text should provide legal certainty in every area where Brexit, like any separation, creates uncertainty, and in particular, and first and foremost, for citizens, for European citizens in the United Kingdom, and British citizens living in one of our member states. These citizens have always been and will remain our priority, that of member states. And I can also tell you that will be the case for the European Parliament. Uncertainty for those citizens has been going on for too long. Thanks to their agreement, their rights will uh, at last be guaranteed on a sustainable basis. We also have certainty uh, for a whole host of uh, project leaders receiving funding from the EU budget in the 27 member states and in the United Kingdom. That is because, thanks to this agreement, uh, financial commitments already undertaken between 28 will still be respected and honoured between 28. We also have certainty for all individuals and businesses affected by all the other issues involved in the separation. At the first uh, press conference I gave uh, three years ago, the, the social, human, legal, economical, technical uh, consequences would be uh, numerous. So for all these various individuals and businesses concerned by all these other issues from now on, but there'll be more certainty, I'm thinking of Euratom, I'm thinking about protection of existing intellectual property rights, protection of geographical indications, protection of personal data. Lastly, this proposal also covers the transition period, which was requested by the British government and which will last until the end of 2020, so 14 months from now. And that may last one or two years further, subject to joint agreement between the United Kingdom and the European Union. Ladies and gentlemen, the UK government has wanted to open one point in the withdrawal agreement, a key point, the question of the protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland. Throughout these negotiations, the EU and the UK were fully committed to protect peace, to protect stability on the island of Ireland. We had to reconcile two objectives. First, include a legally operative solution in the withdrawal agreement that would 
avoid a hard border between Ireland and Northern Ireland, preserve the whole island economy and protect the integrity of the single market. Secondly, a point extremely important to Prime Minister Johnson and the UK was that Northern Ireland remains in the UK's customs territory. Discussions over the past days have at times been difficult, but we have delivered, and we have delivered together. The solution that we found rests on four main elements. Number one, Northern Ireland will remain aligned to a limited set of EU rules, notably related to goods. This means that all applicable procedures on goods will take place at the points of entry into Northern Ireland and not across the island. For this purpose, UK authorities will be in charge of applying the Union's customs code in Northern Ireland. Number two, beyond applicable procedures, there is also the question of customs duties. Northern Ireland will remain in the, the UK's customs territory. It will therefore benefit from the UK's future trade policy. But Northern Ireland will also remain an entry point into our single market. So what have we done to square this circle? UK authorities can apply UK tariffs on products coming from third country so long as those goods entering Northern Ireland are not at risk of entering our single market. However, for goods at risk of entering the single market, UK authorities will apply the EU's tariffs. Number three, this night and this morning also, uh, we were working on the issue of VAT. It is an important subject to avoid distortion of competition within the single market for good. On this point also, we have managed to achieve two objectives, maintain the integrity of the single market, but also satisfy the UK's legitimate wishes. And finally, number four, Prime Minister Johnson and the Taoiseach wanted to ensure long-term democratic support for the application by the UK authorities of relevant union rules in Northern Ireland. Four years after the entry into force of the protocol, the elected representatives of Northern Ireland will be able to decide by simple majority whether to continue applying relevant union rules in Northern Ireland or not. This democratic support is a cornerstone of our newly agreed approach. Why? Because this newly agreed protocol is no longer to be replaced by a subsequent agreement between the EU and the UK. So, it makes sense to ensure consent. Ladies and gentlemen, obviously, uh, when discussing Northern Ireland, we talk about the economy, about uh, technical matters, about goods. But uh, let me say very frankly that for me, since day one, since uh, three years, what really matters are the people, the people of Northern Ireland and Ireland. What uh, really matters is peace. Mesdames, Messieurs, enfin, au-delà euh, 
de cette séparation et de l'accord de Beyond retrait, the the nous avons trouvé un accord. We've also arrived at an, an agreement, and this is equally important here in my eyes, la déclaration uh, to revise the political declaration, which uh, should be adopted by the European Council and the Parliament. This will be a, a quite precise framework for negotiations which will now open to build, rebuild a future ambitious partnership with the United Kingdom, a friend, partner, allied country. On this point, Boris Johnson's government has made a clear choice with respect to the future economic relationship, and that is the choice of a free trade agreement. Any reference to other options, particularly the option of creating a single customs territory uh, between us, has been discarded. What does not change, on the other hand, is, if I can put it this way, our geographical proximity, which is for the long term. And this does not change our interdependence with the UK economy, which is very strong. We have agreed on solid guarantees for the level playing field to facilitate an ambitious free trade agreement, that is, without tariffs and quotas. On this point, I would like to testify, uh, having discussed this often when I've visited various parts of the European Union, to the fact that all member states, the European Parliament, national parliaments of, and obviously businesses, and the members of the business community whom I've met, have paid a great deal of attention and will continue to do so in terms of having uh, a common uh, pillar of standards that will apply at the end of the transition for social rights, environmental protection, state aid, and taxation matters. In sum, the level of ambition of our future free trade agreement will be very much proportionate to the level and qualities of the economic ground rules that will operate between us, the European Union and the United Kingdom. I've talked about the agreement that we've arrived at over these very intensive days and even nights uh, of negotiation. The text of the agreement is now available, so I hope you enjoy reading it on the basis of the an analysis that will uh, set out later on with President Juncker to the European Council. Um, uh, which we have arrived at uh, is that together we have come up with a fair and reasonable result which uh, corresponds to our principles on the European side is now for the European Council to assess the content of that agreement and uh, if it so wishes to approve the agreement and that also applies to the European Parliament. I'd like to thank the European Parliament for its confidence uh, and it is the Parliament which will have the last word will be following through that process uh, as of today. We don't have many days left uh, on the basis of dialogue and respect for our institutions. By way of conclusion, I'd like to say, and that was the uh, subject of my work and ambition over the last three, uh, my mission over the last three years, we, want, we finally have a fair and reasonable basis for an ordered withdrawal of the United Kingdom. It's much better than a disordered withdrawal. And if I can put it this way, above all, we hope that as of the 1st of November, as soon as possible, we can start working on a new partnership with the United Kingdom. I'd like to thank you for your attention.